All right, so maker system. It's the GDS system. And let's, because that's the, that's the default, unless we choose otherwise, the property class is seven years. We know that's the case because that we're using the GDS system instead of the ADS, and that's what they force us to do. We know the date placed in service because that's usually the date we bought it, but it might not be. It might be a little bit after, but usually it's the date we bought it. Recovery period seven uh, is seven year. We know that because it's it's seven year property, which, which with a GDS system, and the method is going to be two hundred percent or double declining balance with a half year convention. We know that's the case because that's the default if we're using a GDS for seven year property, unless we elect to do something other than that, like a straight line method, half year convention is the default unless we purchased a bunch of stuff at the end of the year or something, in which case they might force us to do a half uh, quarter convention or something like that, or mid quarter or whatever they wanna call it. So the depreciation rate is the 0.14429 from the table. So cost or other basis, $10,000. Uh, business percent, it's 100% business percent, so $10,000. No 179 deduction, so still $10,000. No special depreciation, still $10,000. Multiplying that times the 1.1429 gives us the 1,429 for year one. Oh, for, for the depreciation. So this is, this is your maker's depreciation deduction. So there we have that, okay. So, so if there are no adjustments to the basis of the property, other than depreciation, your depreciation deduction for each subsequent during a subsequent voyage, Columbus found what is year of the recovery period will be as follows. So now we've got our table, $10,000 property and notice how easy it is to, they just gave us these percents here. Now you might say, how did they get these percents? Well, you could do a double declining kind of calculation with a mid-year convention and kind of figure it out, but it's a little bit messy to do it that way. These tables are quite easy and, and, and note what you get here. Like if I add if I add all this up, by the way, depreciation over the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven years, we got the two, four, four, nine, plus the one, seven, four, nine, plus the one, two, four, nine, plus the eight, nine, three, plus the eight, nine, two, plus the eight, nine, three, plus four, four, six is the is the eight five uh seven one and then i'm going to add plus the one four two nine i believe there's the ten thousand right it adds up to the ten thousand so we've fully depreciated after that point now again the software would be quite useful to kind of try to match out it should come up pretty close to this it might be a little bit different if they're using a method other than the tables but it should be pretty close the problem with software though is that sometimes you don't have a projection software, so you can't see the depreciation that's taken all the way out into the future. So these tables are great for, for projections to see what's gonna happen if I map this out into the future for making decisions like, should I take the straight line method or the double declining, projecting what my income will be in future periods. Okay, example. The following examples are provided to show you how to use the percentage tables in both examples. Assume the following. You use the property only for business, so no personal use. Uh, you use the calendar year as your tax year, okay? You use GDS for all the properties. So those are pretty common example, pretty common conditions. Number one, you bought a building and land for 120,000 and placed it in service on March 8th. The sales contract showed that the building cost 100,000 and the land cost 20,000. So when you buy building and land, you usually buy it together at one price and then you have to break out how much was building and how much was land because they have two different depreciations. Land is not depreciated, building is. Therefore, we would like to lean towards stuff being on the building side because we would like to expense it or depreciate it for, for our taxes. Although that's reversed for our normal book, bookkeeping, right? Because, because everything's flipped on its head for taxes. Okay. So it is non-residential real property. The building non-adjusted basis uh, is its original cost, 100,000. You refer to the maker's percentage table guide in appendix A and find that you should use table A7A. Uh, uh, March is the third month of your tax year. Uh, so multiply the building's unadjusted basis, 100,000 by the percentages for the third month in table A7A. Uh, uh, your depreciation deduction for each of the of the three years is as follows. So now we've got our building. Now notice why they had to basically say that this was a uh, third month 
because now we're, the tables have to reflect the fact that we no longer are using a mid or, or half year convention because it's this property, it's the real estate, which usually uses a mid month convention. So now you've got to determine which month it's, it's being purchased in so you can use the proper table so it can calculate the proper uh, amounts. So the first three years, they're just multiplying by the amounts found in the table. Again, this is quite useful to be projecting out into the future. I would also plug it into the software and kind of double check that that first number is, 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 is accurate. So I could see if I'm looking at the right table and if I'm looking and I see the first two years at least. So I see if I have the right table and if I I'm plugging into the software correctly, we might do that in future presentations and that, and then use the tables to help me project out further than that into the future. Okay. Example two, during the year you bought a machine seven year property for four thousand dollars office furniture seven year property for one thousand dollars and a computer five year property for five thousand dollars you placed the machine in service in january the furniture in september and the computer in october uh, you do not elect the 179 deduction so we're going to take that off the table focus on makers and none of the items is qualified property for purposes of claiming the special depreciation allowance so we'll take that off the table just looking at makers you place the property in service during the last three months of the year so you must first determine if you have to use the mid-quarter convention so note these kinds of property the seven year and the five year usually have a half a half year convention meaning we assume they were all bought in the middle of the year which makes it easy but people sometimes trying to cheat the system when they do that meaning they buy everything at the end of the year so that they can get a six month depreciation even though they bought everything in the last month of the year that's so the so the irs then says well to stop that from happening if you buy everything in the end of the year we're not going to give you the mid year convention or the half year we gonna you have to use the mid quarter convention so that you don't have to get as big a benefit so now we we bought everything at the end of the year we got to figure if we have to do the mid quarter convention so the 5000 basis of so all prior places so, so the 5000 basis of the computer which you placed in service during the last 3 months the fourth quarter of your tax year is more than 40% of the total basis of all property, $10,000 you placed in service during the year. Therefore, you must use the mid quarter convention instead of the half year convention. Bummer, bummer, but whatever. You refer to the maker's percentage uh, table guide in appendix A to determine which table you should use under the mid quarter convention. The machine is seven year property placed in service in the first quarter. So you use table A2. The furniture is seven year property placed in service in the third quarter. So you use table A4. Finally, because the computer is five year property placed in service in the fourth quarter, you use table 5A or A5. Knowing what table to use for each property, you figure the depreciation. So one of the major points here is that you can, if you use the tables, you would have to use a different table if you if you had to switch from a half year convention to a mid quarter convention because you bought more than 40% of the assets in you know the fourth quarter of the year so here we have the year the property the machine the furniture and the computer for year and one and two the basis multiplied by the percentages in the tables gives us the deduction and once again if you plug this into the software the software would hopefully be able to kind of make the calculation as to whether if you do the data input properly it should be a half year convention or a mid-quarter convention and then you can double check that to the results that you are getting from uh from your tables and then again possibly you might use the tables to project out further than two years to the life of the property you know you know going forward now that you have some confirmation that you have the right tables so we might do some practice problems with software in future presentations.